Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to cover the properties and uses of lipids. Uh, the first thing to know about lipids is, they're, is that they're hydrophobic. Uh, we pr you probably just watched the video cast on carbohydrates, and carbohydrates are known for their ability to get wet or maybe even dissolve completely in water. I mean, think about sugars and starches and all these food ingredients that mix well with water and broths and things like that. Lipids, on the other hand, are not soluble in water or just barely soluble in water. Um, lipids also include a very important group called phospholipids and another group called steroids, which you may have heard some things about too. Lipids are very large biological molecules, but they're not true polymers. They're not made from repeating subunits like we saw in carbohydrates. Uh, lipids include some things you probably have heard about, fats, oils, waxes, and steroids, and again, those phospholipids. And lipids, as I said earlier, don't dissolve very well in water, and we have a word for that. Um, we use the word in biology hydrophobic, which means afraid of or stays away from water. Um, the opposite of hydrophobic is hydrophilic, okay, and things like sugars and um, things that will form hydrogen bonds are hydrophilic. So we've got a dichotomy of words here, hydrophilic versus hydrophobic. Lipids are the classic hydrophobic molecule. Probably the most familiar of all the lipids uh, to most people are fats, and fats are very large molecules built from something called a glycerol and fatty acid molecules. And let me show you what I mean here. Uh, this part right here, I'm going to circle it, okay, is the glycerol molecule, okay? And attach this glycerol molecule with a linkage, a lot like the linkage we saw in carbohydrates, it's made by dehydration synthesis, are three fatty acid chains. So this whole thing here, this whole hydrocarbon chain is a fatty acid chain. And you can see that there are three of them in this fat. So sometimes people will call this type of fat a triglycerol. And you may have heard about triglycerides or something like that in, in blood chemistry. So tri triglycerol molecules made from one glycerol molecule with a linkage formed with dehydration synthesis to three fatty acid chains. Now, you probably have also heard about fats being saturated or unsaturated. Well, what they're talking about when people talk about saturation in lipids is the presence of hydrogens. So if you look here in this fatty acid chain, you can see that each carbon has the maximum amount of hydrogens attached to it. So each of the four covalent bonds for this whole chain of carbons is filled with hydrogen. Whereas this fat, fatty acid chain down here has been unsaturated. If you look, there's a double bond right here, and because there's a double bond, we've lost two hydrogens. So to put this double bond in here, we had to take out two hydrogens. So it's been desaturated. Now because we've we formed a double bond here between one carbon and another carbon. This is a monounsaturated fat. Uh, if you do this multiple times, you can get polyunsaturated fats. And again, you probably heard these words in connection to food labels. Um, also, it's important to notice here, a saturated fat is nice and straight. The fatty acid chain here is very nice and straight, and this makes it dense. Unsaturated fats, um, especially polyunsaturated fats, are less dense. So if you think about it, things that are dense are solids and things that are less dense can be liquids. So saturated fats are mainly the fats that are solid at room temperature. Okay, and you probably know some, some saturated fats, things like butter, lard, grease, okay, all these delicious things that in our food that aren't necessarily very good for us. Unsaturated fats, on the other hand, are less dense at room temperature, and many of them are liquid at room temperature, and these are the things we generally refer to as oils. I mean, there's olive oil, peanut, uh, corn oil, soybean. Frequently, you'll see corn oil, corn oil and soybean oil referred to as vegetable oil, which is kind of the generic here. But in any case, oils are liquid at room temperature because their fatty acid chains are unsaturated, which reduces their density, which causes you know, the density to, to reduce to the point where they become liquid at room temperature. Um, the structure causes the function. All right, lipids are high calorie. Um, 
everybody knows that if you eat a lot of fatty food, you're going to probably put on weight. And lipids are the, the most concentrated way to store energy biologically in living cells. And human cells, of course, are very good at doing this. Uh, I found this interesting diagram here on the internet of where males versus females accumulate body fat. You probably already knew this, but you may not have thought about it before. And don't forget plants. Plants also store energy as lipids. Um, it's in their seeds, and you can usually press oil out of just about any kind of plant seed. Um, I think these are sunflower seeds, so this would be sunflower oil, which is one of the healthier ones. I think you get the point. Phospholipids are another class of lipids other than fats that are absolutely necessary to the evolution of cells. There could be no cells on earth without phospholipids. And phospholipids are the main component of all cell membranes. Um, what's cool about phospholipids is they're kind of bipolar. Uh, they, are, they have a two ends and each end behaves differently when you put them in water. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, this is a phospholipid molecule and it's got a head end. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on up here, but the most important thing about the head end, remember, is a phosphate group. So we can call this the phosphate head. And down here, hanging off the head, are two fatty acid chains. And you already know what fatty acids look like, so here they are. This one's got a, a desaturation right here, so it's got a little kink in it. This one looks like it's supposed to be completely saturated. So fatty acids attached to a head, and we call these the tails. Now what's cool about this molecule is the head is hydrophilic, which means it will dissolve in water, or at least try to dissolve in water. The tails, on the other hand, are hydrophobic. They can't dissolve in water. They actually repel water, will not form hydrogen bonds. So this causes a really interesting thing to happen in cell membranes. Uh, phospholipids arrange themselves in a bilayer, because if you think about it, if you've got water outside the cell, and you've got a water-based cytoplasm inside the cell, the only way these phospholipids can orient themselves is with their tails pointing towards the middle and their heads kind of forming two, forming two walls facing the water molecules. Because remember, we got water out here and water out here. So this satisfies the, the requirements of this weird molecule. The head end is dissolved in water, but the tails are isolated from the water. So this is what gives us the classic bilayer, oops, structure of a cell membrane. So I'll show you another picture of this in just a minute. Another type of lipid are cholesterol molecules, which belong to a class of lipids called steroids. As far as I can tell, the only steroid that we really need to pay much attention to in AP Bio is cholesterol. Now cholesterol is absolutely crucial to the cell membranes of animals. I'm not sure how important it is in plant cell membranes, but we almost always associate cholesterol with, with um, fatty foods. And cholesterol is a steroid that is used by cells as, a, as a, um, a raw ingredient for making other steroids, like some hormones. Um, so we call it a precursor. That's a, that's a good word to add to your vocabulary right now. So the body starts with cholesterol, and from cholesterol it can build lots and lots of other types of molecules. Cholesterol is a good molecule to be able to recognize by sight. You've got these four rings, which don't have any openings. They're four fused rings and a little short fatty acid tail up here. So this is a cholesterol molecule. And again, it's a building block for lots of other steroids, especially some hormones. Now, where does cholesterol go? Well, this is a very complicated looking model of the phospholipid bilayer. All these little orange things are phospholipids. I'll circle one phospholipid right here. There's some other things going on in the cell membrane, which we'll talk about later. But right here, these little yellow things are the cholesterol molecules. And the more cholesterol molecules you incorporate into the bilayer, the softer and more flexible the cell membrane becomes. So this is one of the ways that a cell can control the flexibility of its cell membrane, especially at lower temperatures. I think that ends the PowerPoint. That's the end of the video cast.